greats that have been here before us have done incredible things, like figuring out the car engine or how to fly or the computers or how to go to space. Because of this, we really enjoy very comfortable lives. Now, their success is majorly attributed one, to their genius, or two, to their routine. Now, I can't really do much about the genius bit, but I can certainly do something about the routine. I want to test and see if living the routine of such greats can really change my fortunes. So to begin with and to cut the long story short, I'm going to live for one day the routine of Sir Isaac Newton. So let's cut to the montage, shall we? Sir Isaac Newton, the man responsible for our understanding of gravity. He shattered the light through a prism to see its full colors and invented calculus among various other things. The man was pure genius. Despite all this, his habits are largely the reason why he's responsible for the mark he left behind. It is 292 years later, we're still using his work to send things to space. We even use a telescope he designed to this day and see beyond what our eyes could never see. And thanks to that, we are leading a new generation of inventors and scientists to solve the mysteries that remain unanswered. Back to Earth. On one hand, we have Sir Isaac Newton, and on the other, we have me. I struggle with focus. I lose interest in what I'm doing after working for a few hours. It's not that I don't have interest in what I'm doing, it's just that I would either get tired or excited about something else, or I would have a new thought and I would want to do something else. And that something else eats most of my time. And because of that, there are times when I achieve very little. I think it's fair to say that focus is my biggest struggle. And this experiment is going to put that focus to test. So Isaac Newton had obviously achieved a lot, but those achievements didn't come through without any sacrifices. We are talking about the same sacrifices that will become the part of my routine. So for the routine, I will be following his routine when he first joined Cambridge University. There's not a lot known about his work ethic except that he was always working and figuring something out. And as per Gail Christensen, a known biographer of Newton, it is said that Newton never traveled. He stayed in his room, worked seven days a week, 18 hours a day. He pushed and drove himself. And to resist the distractions, Newton drew up a plan and in his journal called Fragment on the History of Apostasy, Newton said the way to chastity, abstinence, or a better word in our case here, self-restraint, is not to struggle with the incontinent thoughts, but to avert your thoughts with some other employment by reading or meditating on other things. Now, I'm not sure what your position is on abstinence. I cannot agree with Newton there. But I also don't have a choice. As I am living the life of the man, I have to hear him out and do as he did. So if I have distracting thoughts, I won't be seeking to relieve myself by any means at all. Instead, I will seek refuge by either meditating or reading a book to push myself past the distracting desires and thoughts and then getting back to work. So in short, this is the plan. I'm going to work 18 hours out of 24 hours for one day. I prep my food ahead of time. I'm going to read or meditate if I find myself distracted. And for work, I have to edit some 50 odd videos for a project I'm working on. There's no way I can edit all 50 videos in one day my plan is to get at least two videos done in the 18 hours. Plus, I have some research to do on another project I have just taken up. All this has to be done without any distractions. And when I say edit, I am patching the audio, editing the clips, color grading, and also adding effects where necessary using Adobe After Effects. I also have food in the amount of almost 3000 calories prepared the night before. The only break I would take would be for the toilet. Other than that, the focus is completely on editing the two videos, plus getting the research completed. Oh, and since I'm documenting this experience, some time will be spent manhandling this thing. I, I mean, the camera. My mental health, I feel, is definitely at stake. 
but I must do what I've set myself out to do. The test here is really to see if I can be effective in getting things done by working long hours. I will start at 3.30 in the morning and should be done by 9.30 at night. So what are you waiting for? Let's cut to the chase. So I began my day at 3.32 a.m. I was up for the task, except there was one problem. I was tired because of sleep. I slept poorly. And it could be because I was anticipating this day. So we'll see how I do with maybe four to six hours of sleep. It's supposed to be eight, but let's see what we can make or break. It was the anticipation of this experiment and making sure that I get up at 3.30 that kept me up all night. I can't ever recall being this excited or vigilant about anything else in my life. I don't know if that's normal. I didn't shower, but I did brush my teeth, put on some clothes, and got my breakfast, and was away with work immediately. At the beginning, I felt the surge of tiredness and wanting to go back to bed because I felt the sleepiness. But it actually wasn't as bad because 20 minutes later, I was in the groove and working at full pace. I also recorded myself every two hours to document how I was feeling as the day was going by. Now on a normal day, whenever I am working on anything, I usually find myself wanting to get up to take a break. But I noticed in this experiment setting, I didn't do that exactly. I didn't take a break except for when I needed to go to the bathroom or when I meditated. And that approximately was 20 or 25 minutes. That's it. But my point is, I didn't feel this need to get up every five minutes and walk around the room imagining things because that is what exactly happens to me. I usually feel this rush of energy when I have a new idea that pops up in my head. And instead of writing down the idea and continuing with my workflow, I would usually walk around with excitement and imagine things and not really do anything. I would procrastinate in that way. But in this experiment setting, I didn't do that. Now to make sense of all this, I have a theory. I think when you attach a deadline to something, something real immediate, you tend to shut everything down. Everything inside your brain and everything in your environment just to focus on that task. And that was exactly my behavior here. I didn't care about anything else. I just kept at it. I was not seeking distractions, allowing for new ideas or imaginations to pop up. Even if they came up, I ignored them. I didn't seek any pleasures or anything that gave me comfort. I just focused on my task. Now attaching a deadline to this thing is one part of the theory. The other second half is accountability. Making sure that I upload something on this channel. I think that kept me motivated. The results are unexpected because I thought I would be struggling with focus or seeking rest or pleasure, but I didn't do any of that. I thought my progress would deteriorate, but that also did not happen. Let's see if there's a dip in my workflow as the time goes by. Now, as I kept working away, out of all things, I did not expect that my actual battle was really with time. Time was taking away. And as I documented, it was taking me longer to edit the videos than I had ever expected. My expectation was to actually finish the editing of the videos and have a few hours available for the research. But obviously things don't have to go as you plan them, do they? Part of the reason for delays was the computer failing me. I'm doing fine, the computer's struggling. <sighs> That's all I ever document. Who's at fault now? Me or the computer? But part of the reason for delays could be me and my estimation of time. Going through two videos containing two hours of footage per video is usually a lot of work. And I started having second thoughts about this goal being realistic. Doing 18 hours is not a big problem. A larger problem is getting what you intend to do within 18 hours. I thought six to seven hours per video should be good enough, right? Well, 
I wasn't so sure anymore. Time kept ticking away, and almost 12 hours later, at 3.15 p.m., I finished only the first video. 12 hours, and I've been at it. I have another video to complete, plus a research to go, and all that to do in six hours. I used up three extra hours, leaving me with only six hours to complete the last final video. If you haven't thought so far, this is insane. I lost courage because I know that editing a two hour video with all the post effects, sound effects, fixing the colors, all that cannot be done in six hours. Or so I told myself. Yeah, 5.30. I don't know if I can get it all finished, but the goal still is in the four hours that I have left, I gotta finish it up. Now, despite the fact all the odds were set against me, I had to set myself a target, a deadline I had to accomplish. So I had no other choice, so I kept marching along. I pulled out some food for extra energy, consumed it all up right away, and I was on my merry way until some more crashes started to happen. It got pretty bad actually. I didn't have time to document the next two hour update report because I just felt there wasn't enough time. The expectation of wanting to complete the research work, remember, don't forget that because I really had to get that done, that expectation was completely lost. I didn't think I was ever going to get that done in a six hour time. I told myself even if I could get the two video edits completed, that would still be pretty impressive. I think I can't make the research paper or research work, but I can probably still focus on just getting this bit done. Finish the editing on two lessons, at least that bit. That will be quite an accomplishment. I've never done that in a day. That will be impressive. Going through each clip, checking its consistency with the script, removing the garbage, repeat, repeat, repeat. It was 8 p.m. I had 1.5 or two hours at max left. And I was still editing. I had not put in any music, did not finish fixing any audio levels. I had just finished the color grading process. I didn't even begin the super slow processing of After Effects. Two hours left, I'm almost down to 18. But problem remains, I have just finished editing. That means I have only two hours to do the audio, the After Effects and everything else. Let's see if I can make it. This challenge completely beat out my expectations. It goes to show that whatever perceived ideas you had about your plans, half the times they're not realistic enough. And if you want to get a realistic idea, the only way you can do that is by actually testing it out by doing it yourself. It was 9.20 p.m. 10 minutes or 40 minutes before the deadline. And I had patched the audio levels, fixed the music, everything was completed. The only thing that remained was the post-editing and processing in After Effects. So I went to After Effects, started it up, and the computer crashed. The computer failed me again. One more time, it failed me again. So we restart. I shut down and restart. And it's around this time at 10.40 p.m that I finished the complete processing of the final video. Now both the videos are completed. I am a whole hour and 10 minutes, or at max, at least 40 minutes behind the clock. All the video edits, audio edits, and the processing in After Effects, according to Rescue Time, took me approximately 17 hours. Add the crashes, meditation, bathroom breaks, I think that's pretty accurate. Now, I'm not sure if Sir Isaac Newton's work ethic followed the same kind of deadline and accountability. There's frankly not much known about his work ethic except for the hours he worked and how he worked. But he consistently worked 18 hours a day and clearly accomplished a lot. And that's kind of cool that I did that for one day. I'm not sure how close I am to Sir Isaac Newton and his routine, but I really wanted to use deadlines to see as a measure of how much I can accomplish within a given day, especially in particular 18 hour time frame. Now, despite being behind the deadline, I'm pretty freaking pleased that I was able to pull off 
two complete polished edits all in one day. Now from this experiment, I've learned that deadlines in combination with accountability does wonders. It kicks your procrastination in the butt when you know that you have a deadline which is real and when it has consequences. It works like a charm. Secondly, because of deadlines and accountability, all my fears about not being able to focus, wanting to rest, seek pleasure, all those didn't bother me at all. Thirdly, I realized that you can never know how realistic your plan is until if you actually test it out by doing it and see how much time it actually takes to do something. Also, the fourth realization is that it's safe to say you can pull off 18 hours of work as long as there's a deadline attached. For somebody like me who's barely ever pulled off an all-nighter, I was actually pretty happy and pretty proud that I was able to do that. But if you don't believe me, ask the college students who pull off all-nighters all the time. They will tell you that working 18 hours a day sometimes is not a big deal. Doing it consistently is, however, another challenge. Lastly, at the beginning, I felt that I had too much time. And despite having such high energy levels, I felt I didn't use my time more effectively. I could have pushed myself faster at the beginning so I wouldn't have had this problem of being really 40 minutes or an hour, 10 minutes behind. I pushed the gas only when it came down to the last seconds and I don't think that's healthy. So I'm gonna try and make sure for the next time that I use my time early on more productively. I did one day of what Sir Isaac Newton did every day. Would I do it again? I actually enjoyed it. So yeah, would I do it every day consistently? I think the answer to that is clearly no. That would definitely be hurting my life balance. But there's a lot that we can learn from what's known about Sir Isaac Newton's work ethic. You can ask yourself how you can apply this to your life. You don't have to do the full 18 hours. You can do 12 or six or even three. You can do that, but do it with a realistic goal of wanting to achieve something. And I think that will help you get things done and move forward. Pulling off 18 hours doesn't mean anything when you sit around with not much results to show. It would mean a whole lot if there's some goal that you target onto and you accomplish it. I felt that excitement. Try it for yourself and let me know how your journey goes. Till next time, adios. I'm still thinking about being done at 9.30 or 10ish around there somewhere because I did start at 4 to be fair so I think I should be done at 10 instead of 9.30.